This is Matt from Tooth Grinder, and you are geeking out to Gear Gods. This is Jason from Tooth Grinder, and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. This is John Ewell from Tooth Grinder, and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. This is Wales from Tooth Grinder, and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. Hey guys, this is Jason Goss from Tooth Grinder. I play guitar in Tooth Grinder, and I'm going to run you through my rig. Um, I'll start with guitars. Uh, I have a Paul Reed Smith Custom 24. Uh, this finish on this one is burnt maple leaf, and I have the PRS metal pickups in it. And this is my main guitar I use for mostly every song other than a couple in our set. It's gorgeous. It's my favorite guitar. And then when we play a song called Blue, which some of you might know, I bust out this Fender Strat that's in a completely different tuning, which is why I am using that one right now. Uh, and it sounds good with the, lo with the low tuning because this is a G sharp. And I got a Seymour Duncan Little 59 in there. It's got a, like the humbucker feel, which is, helps for what we're playing. And then this is just a backup. Um, for my main axe, it's another custom 24 uh, natural finish with Pegasus and Sentient by Seymour Duncan in it. All right, lock that in there. Then down at the amp, uh, I got a Mesa Boogie Dual Rec. It's the Blackface Rack Mountable one. It was actually only made in the, I believe, early 90s, maybe late 80s, but. They were definitely discontinued, um, but it sounds perfect for what I like to do. I like Mesa products, anything they really make. And this one just seemed to have the right amount of, the right distortion tone that I wanted and uh, the clean is uh, very nice as well. And something I use on the clean channel only right now uh, is this TC Electronics G Major 2, which I have a couple different settings for right now. I got the diamond setting, but when I do blue, I do this one. Oh, wait, maybe it's back. Yeah, right here. A um, bunch of different effects. That has a univibe on it with a little bit of reverb. Um, you know, all, it has, honestly, has more stuff than I can imagine, <laughs> which is why I got it. And this little wireless guy I use, Line 6. Uh, pretty standard wireless. It works well. Doesn't give me many problems. And then... Over to the board here, I just run everything in the front of the amp right now. The, uh, the G major was in, in the uh, loop, but this is all in the front. And it's all in series. Um, that's the line six. Boss tuner. This overdrive's from Seymour, the 805. It's awesome. I use that for all my leads. Uh, this thing is interesting. The Pog. This is the original Pog. Uh, now they sell the Pog 2 electro harmonics. And I like to use it to make, like, terrify terrifying noises on distortion so like a lot of like really in your face intense stuff whether I'm tremolo picking or just ringing a dissonant chord uh, it kind of makes it spooky and this is memory boy this is delay I use for a couple little things here and there not a whole lot this is another crazy pedal swollen pickle it I like to use it on distortion even though it's a fuzz and probably break up better and clean but it makes this fat low end that I use for just really like blown out heavy parts that's tight. And then over to the volume swell, this is just my best friend. I use this to dial back. Uh, some, sometimes I dial back to make it like a softer tone. Sometimes I just use it to just kill my volume. I, I, I use it for a ton of things. I just, I love having a volume swell rather than just toggling on the guitar personally. And the last thing is just a freeze pedal. I use that for some of our uh, changeovers between songs when we change guitars and I'll just like freeze a tone to try to kind of add like room noise rather than being dead silent. It's a cool little trick I can do. And lastly is just my cabinet. Um, rocking orange cabinets of orange 412 and it's awesome. I love it. Love orange. They're good to us. So that's about it. That's my whole rig. What's up guys? I'm John Yule. I play guitar in Tooth Grinder and i um, been playing guitar for close to like nine years. Um, and I'll show you my gear. So for guitars, my main whip for a drop E tuning we've been using, I've had this guitar for like seven or eight years, a Jackson R24, ebony fretboard, not sure about the body, um, Floyd Rose, one pickup, one EMG, super simple. 
Uh, I got it at the, at the time because I was super into Children of Bodom and learning like Hate Breeder and Kissing the Shadows front to back. So I kind of was like inspired from that and the shape and still play it to this day. So that's fun. Uh, for my backup guitar, I've been playing this Ernie Ball JP7. Oh, this fall. And um, I've had this guitar for a couple years. We use this for our, our track Blue that we've been playing live. Um, but it's capable with doing the drop B tuning as well in case uh, a string flubs out. Um, yeah, it's got the uh, liquefier, Crunch Lab DiMarzio pickups. It's got a missing 9 volt piece for the piezo that uh, my boy Austin over there is going to fix up before we start playing. But uh, the piezo output, so we get some cool acoustic sounds. All mahogany guitar. It's nice and dark. It's pretty cool. I like it. It's fun. And uh, yeah, I got a pretty simple, you know, amp setup. The way it runs live and everything. I've been using XFX2, Mark II. Um, I'll show you some tones. So I use this for like a little, like pre-dirty clean. Been using the Texas clean in the USA. Sounds really das nice. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> das nitrous. You know, got some spawn nitrous, das metal action. Um, all cabs are obviously bypassed because I've been running through a 2x12 open back orange here. And um, soon to be, this should be a 4x12 um, orange as well, but cost permitting, it will have to wait till next door. Um, for cleans, I'll just go back here real quick for uh, my clean patch. I'm using a shiver and a vibrato, really happy with that. I use a lot of phase and flange. Um, this one, <laughs> I use this for a track called Waltz of Mad Men. It's got a lot of like echoey, multi-delay type um, type stuff. Yeah, and uh, you know, I like using two amps. I like uh, the contrast and, you know, running certain amps through the orange and through the, this, uh, this um, I think it's a 1960 USA lead Marshall. But, um, yeah, I think that, and then like a dirty clean for when I'm not feeling my main clean, the shiver. And that's all powered through the XLS 1000. Got two channels. And, um, for pedals, yeah, you just get the MFC, you know, nice and easy. You know, I use a little pitch, a little multi-delay, a little delay, some chorus here and there. And then for the clean, I like using phase, flange, and chorus for, uh, you know, songs like Lace and Anchor. This one is all multi-delay, you know, it's a really loud, echoey type sound, really washy, a lot of fun. Das Nice, that's the, uh, the dirty clean for songs like The House and Coeur d'Alene. And um, Wireless G50 Relay, it's good for you know, stages like this. We're not playing like Donington Park or Download Festival or Sonosphere, so we don't need to you know, up the game at all. But um, yeah, other than that, that's, I forgot the Crybaby, it's 535Q. Had that guy for a solid 10 years probably. Still working, still one of my favorite Waz today. Um, I use Dunlop strings, 11 through 56. If you want to know gauges, I'd say 11, 13, uh, 16, 32, or, or, I'm sorry, 28, 36, 56. So I've been using that. And for the low, the low 7 string, I use a 70 gauge for drop G sharp. Um, I think that's it. What's up, everybody? I'm Wills from Tooth Grinder. I'm going to take you through my drum kit. So, right now, playing Tama drums, Birch Babinga. I got a bronze snare right here from the SLP line. Love this guy, it's nice and loud, cuts through all the heavy guitars that we have. All Aquarian drum heads. These are two ply, a five and a seven ply. Uh, let's see, high velocity snare head with a reinforcement dot. And then for my kick, I have a Super Kick 2 coated and I put a kick pad on the inside so it kind of works like a reinforced snare head. So it's held up awesome, has a really fat clicky sound, I really like that. Uh, all Sabian cymbals, so I got a mixture, some HHX stuff, this is an AAX, HHX, the XS20, which I don't even think they make anymore. This guy is nice, it's really bright, kind of cuts through everything, and this is just a ridiculous stack of all broken cymbals. It kind of sounds really great though. A really good accent off of this. Uh, Speed Cobra pedals, which are awesome, nice longer footboard with the old matching hi-hat. Vic Firth Extreme 5As, 55As, sorry about that. A little longer, 
a little bit thicker. I like these guys a lot. But yeah, super simple drum kit. No triggers, no samples, no nothing. Just playing the drums straight up. What's going on guys? Uh, my name is Matt. I play bass and I sing in Tooth Grinder and I'm going to run you through uh, the rig I'm using on this tour. So um, the staple right here, I mean it's pretty simple across. I play P basses. Um, standard. The only upgrade uh, that I actually play is the kind folks at Seymour Duncan. I play quarter pounder pickups in all of my P basses. It's just I like passive pickups live. I know a lot of guys don't. Um, I like being able to dynamically control it and depending on where I st like strike the string, um, I have control over that every night. So some nights I have a couple beers, I get a little aggressive, I want to play a little more aggressive. So um, quarter pounders, all the wonderful folks at Seymour Duncan. Sorry, the bass is disgusting. I should be wiping them down, but I, I don't. So um, so this is my main rig. Uh, we're playing in drop B. Um, so you got B, F sharp, B, E. Uh, I also play um, Dunlop stainless steel strings. Always they just, they're the best. They sound super aggressive. They feel good. Um, and it's just they have some brightness that I can't find with any other string. So I love the stainless steel strings. So Brian Kehoe, all the dudes at Dunlop, love you guys. Um, next bass, same thing. Uh, P bass, quarter pounders. Um, this we're playing, it's drop B, but then we drop the low end down to G sharp. Uh, so it gets pretty low and bumping. Um, gauges again, sorry, I should have said that before. Uh, I'm playing 60 to 120. Uh, it's kind of a light gauge for the, for the tuning we're playing in. But uh, I, I like it. I like having a little flop to it. Um, again, and with the stainless steel strings, I can control um, what's going on, how much movement is in the string, depending on where I strike. So I like having that human control and that organic aspect uh, in the playing when I'm playing live. And then the same thing, this is uh, my backup rig. Again, just same exact thing, just the rosewood fretboard. Um, P-bases get the job done. Uh, the road hogs, there's a reason they haven't changed in years and years. So can move on over. Uh, to what I'm actually playing out of. Uh, I should have my backup head, but I don't. Uh, there's a handful of reasoning behind that. But uh, Tim McKee and the beautiful people over at Mesa, um, they take care of us. I'm playing an M6 carbine. It's a very simple head. As you can see, the EQ, I literally keep 12 o'clock all across the board. Um, volume changes depending on the size room we're playing. Um, but because it's a hybrid, it has a two preamp and it's a solid state, you know, regular amp. Um, the gain doesn't do too much, it just adds a little more headroom to it. Um, but like I said, I, I, I keep everything dimed at, at 12 o'clock and, you know, it acts more like a power amp for me. Um, it's just a crystal clear, natural tone. Um, but the aggression in my bass playing that comes out is coming from the preamp, which is in a stomp box form. Uh, ben Varellen out of Seattle hand makes uh, amplifiers and cabinets and and everything like that but the aggression is coming from this is all tube two channel preamp um, so it's two independent tube channels um, those are the settings I'm running this is my main the main channel which I keep on at all times and then uh, when I need to get a little meaty with it obviously the meat smoke that I mean you can hear it engage behind me but that's where all the gain and I keep the gain on this channel minimum and it's and it's already almost too much um, but it's the best it's it's basically the staple of my tone um, so you know I also keep a sans amp on the board who doesn't it's every bass player's secret weapon um, if you're not playing digital stuff I guess I'll give this little hint away right now um, when my strings start going dead after a show or two, because I don't have the luxury of changing them every day, um, you boost a little bit more presence, a little bit more treble uh, into the blend, just a hair, and it, it brightens those old strings right back up. So, sorry guys, it's bass player secret I just gave away. Um, and we move over. Um, orange cabinets, we all play orange cabs. They are uh, they're the best for at least what I do. 
I play the uh, OBC 115, OBC 410, and they're just fantastic. They're great, sturdy workhorse cabinets. They sound really good. Um, the 115 pushes so much air on stage. It's everybody in the front row gets blasted out by it, and all the clarity and the grit comes from the 410. And it's I couldn't be happier with the setup. It's the only thing I would like to do is basically get backups of everything. Uh, so if anything ever happens and I need to send it out, another one goes right back in its place. I'm, I'm super content with the way my rig is running. It sounds good, and if it sounds good, don't change it. So, you know, that's it, guys. Uh, pretty simple on the low-end aspect for Tooth Grinder, but uh, thanks for checking it out, and I hope you guys dig it. Right of choice. Phil Collins used it. I mean, come on, Phil Collins. Um, with a maple top, flame maple top. The serial number says it's from 2001. 